Hi and welcome to Advanced TV. I'm Louise Pinnell and I'm joined by the team from McCown and Evans. And we'll explain the how-tos of US immigration. Or at least try to give you some good ideas. What comes first, the visa or registration of business? Well, to apply for the visa, we need the business to be registered. Generally, that means incorporated in a state of the United States. It's a good idea to think about what kind of visa you're going to be looking for as you're going through the entire business process because who owns the company can make a difference about whether you're not going to qualify. You mm -hmm. would qualify for a particular type of visa. How important is it to understand local business laws and regulations? You know, immigration is federal law, so it isn't critical, but I always advise clients to look into the requirements for business licenses and things like that in the city where they're planning to found the business because often there is a requirement to register with the city. And of course, we want our clients to comply with as much of the law as they can. Should you apply for a visa within Australia or in the United States? An immigration status can be changed or extended in lots of cases in the United States but all visas are actually issued at consulates outside the US, so it's best to do it in Australia. Applying for a visa isn't just about filling out a form. What else is required? When we look at a, an initial case for an E3, quite often there are unusual factors. Perhaps the person doesn't have a degree. Um, perhaps they have a degree in a field that's unrelated to the business. Or maybe they're the sole owner of the company and they have some concerns about whether the visa would be granted in that situation. The forms part of the, of the application isn't that big a deal, but to really know the course that you should be taking and um, what the, the repercussions are of that decision is not an easy thing to do. So that part mm -hmm. really requires some expertise. Can I sponsor myself with my own company? There are three principal visas that, that entrepreneurs use. With an E3, it's very difficult. E2 is where an investor comes, makes a substantial investment in the United States and is sponsoring themselves, and that's the purpose of the visa. And then the L1, if an individual comes and owns a company and you know, starts a company in the United States and they were working for a related company, ownership connection, in Australia for at least a year before coming, then you can use the L1 to sponsor yourself as well. How long can I travel without a visa before I require authorization? Well, the visa waiver allows people to be here for up to 90 days without a visa. Once a person is actually working here or starting to operate a business, it's really time to have a work visa for that type of activity. How can I receive a salary from a US company? To be paid in the United States for work that you're doing in in, on U.S. soil, you need to have a work visa. So getting paid requires getting that visa authorized and then you're all set to get paid. Can a spouse work with his or her dependent visa? Yes, that's one of the greatest things about the E3. Very unusual. Spouses can work after entering an E3 dependent status and then applying for a work permit and it takes about two months to receive that. E visas and L visas are the only types of visas where spouses are allowed to work as dependents. What happens if I sell equity in my business? It depends on the type of visa. E3s, unless you're going to get rid of the company, um, you can sell equity and it's perfectly fine. For E2 visas, if you sell so much equity that the company is less than 50% Australian owned, it cancels the visa. And for L1s, if you have an equity sale that destroys the corporate relationship between the foreign entity and the US company, then the L1 visa also automatically becomes invalid. What are the tax requirements? In general, people who earn money in the United States have to pay tax to the US government on that money. An income earned abroad is taxed and collected by the foreign government. But there's tax treaties in place with all countries, and they're complicated and require filings typically in both countries. So uh, definitely something to refer to a tax, international tax person. How does a business owner get a green card? If you own even 5% of the business, you're barred from getting a green card. So entrepreneurs are going to have a tough time being sponsored by the company that they've founded. But there might be other options, being sponsored by a separate company or even spinning off a company that the person doesn't own might be an option in some circumstances. And there are other non-employment ways to get green cards, such as marriage to a US citizen, entering the diversity visa lottery, and things like that.